What we were interested to uh, uh, in uh, were the use of um, FTG PET scanning in RCC because it, it is a bit controversial and I, I think data is, is really different depending on the cohorts you look into. And so what we uh, used is a, a classical FTG PET CTs and um, we found out that uh, Roughly two thirds of our patients are being positive for FTG PET, so not all of the patients are being positive. And we looked into um, those that have been um, that have a um, metabolic avidity for for the tracer, and whether um, they differ in terms of their prognosis in patients. And that's something that we found quite interesting because um, patients that have an um, um, FTG avidity uh, had, a, had a poor outcome in terms of overall survival and those that didn't, they had a better one or low and, you know, so, um, and uh, I think that is, um, it really is um, proof of concept, I would say. So it's quite early. And the question is, what do we do with that type of information? And I think that's something we have to, um, we have to follow up on in subsequent um, studies. And um, so one that we are currently trying or planning is, is, is really um, to use FTG PET scanning to inform about um, continuation of therapy. So let's say you have a very good response on the PET scan, so meaning complete or near complete metabolic response, do you really to um, succeed with treatment or can you can you withhold treatment in those patients? So I think that that's a relevant question that we kind of focus on, but um, there's even more to really understand and, and, and to see whether it, it is associated with specific subtypes of therapy of, of RCCs and um, whether it could be used as a prognostic um, factor as well um, when it comes to localized or more, more advanced disease. So a lot of information that, that you can derive from uh, PET scanning actually.